It was one of those rites of passage, a bar mitzvah of sorts, but this was bigger, much bigger than shaving for the first time or getting your period. This was the chance for all young high school men to lose their virginity and a chance for all young high school women to dress up, feel like adults, look pretty. Everyone felt the driving need to go through this rite of passage, to not be left out, to be a part of the group. Either way, you get to take a day off of school. But like every rite of passage, the high school prom is probably more traumatic than fun because no matter what, you feel like you have to go and the entire time you're made to look like you're having fun, especially for the photographers. You have to have a perfect record of your perfect life so you can upstage everyone else. With every aspect of prom, there was always a conflict, an expense, or an irony. I mean, this is supposed to be one of the best times in your life, and it's wrought with confusion. First, find a date. It has to be someone socially acceptable, otherwise it would be less embarrassing to just not go. Then, go through the trauma of asking your prospective date to actually go with you, or, or if you're a woman, huh, waits to be asked, which is almost more cruel. Then, see which of your friends are going. Arrange what group you'd like to go with to your prom. Then you have to start worrying about the details. For men, this meant transportation, uh, the cheapest tuxedo, what, what kind of corsage to buy, something that pins on, or something that they wear on their wrist, or something they carry, like a bouquet. Oh, and don't forget the most important part, enough liquor and slash or condoms. Note how suddenly the prospect of multiple hookers performing anything you'd want and they were both less expensive and less of a hassle than this quote-unquote date. <laughs> For women, the details meant picking the right dress, the right shoes, the right purse, the right jewelry, the right perfume, the right makeup, the hair that has to be just right. Note how you have to then coordinate your clothing with your date. <laughs> so much like real life. <laughs> Then beg your partner to let you wear the or beg your parents. Let me start that again. Then beg your parents to let you wear the dress you picked out, or, or keep the makeup and hairstyle that you wanted. Beg your parents to let you borrow the sports car. Beg your parents for enough money to pay for the limo, the flowers, the clothes. Beg your parents to let you stay out past curfew. How about 6 a.m. Just this once? But come on, it's prom. Then the big day arrives. Ditch school because you know that you've got to get your hair done, and that could take hours, and you want to spend some time in the sun. You don't want to look as pale as a ghost for the photos. Then, after getting ready for an inordinate amount of time, meet up and take pictures. Ugh. This usually entails the men picking up the woman, taking pictures at the woman's parents' house, then going back to the man's parents' house and taking more photos there. It's almost worse than a wedding. Then, finally arrive at prom. Take more pictures. Talk to as many friends as you can there. Compliment their dresses and tuxedos. Find out what everyone else is doing after prom. See if anyone going to ha doing it has anything better planned than you. <laughs> Note how many women are repeatedly pulling up their strapless dresses so they don't fall out of them. Note how many men are already drunk. And look, it's not even dinner yet. <laughs> Take lots of pictures with your Instamatic camera. Let's do a group shot. Oh, let me take a picture with so-and-so. Then eat. Try to be Miss Manners and figure out how to eat your salad without using your knife. <laughs> Try to see how little the women are actually eating. Note how many women go to the bathroom in groups. In any case, whatever you do, don't stop feeling awkward, but keep smiling. Then the dancing. Try to remember what your father taught you. Try not to look stiff. Try not to sweat. Dance in a box. Right foot forward, feet together. Left foot left, feet together. Right foot backward, feet together. Right foot right, feet together. Or go for the old high school standard. Wrap your arms around each other and just sway, <laughs> occasionally making out in the middle of the dance floor. Note how many women have more their lipstick smeared across their cheek or on their date's collar. Note how many bow ties have loosened. Then collect your things, say your goodbyes, and take a few more photos, and head out to the after-prom activities. Possibly, possible options include a late dinner, a four-hour boat cruise, a walk around the lake, a bonfire, bowling, a hotel party, or the back of Dad's sports car. 
know how disheveled you look at 6 a.m. Try to clean yourself up in the car before you go into the driveway in case your ter parents are waiting for you. And don't make up for too long as you say your goodbyes in front of your house. Then get up, get in the house as quick, quietly as possible, drop all your clothes into a pile in the middle of your bedroom floor, and collapse on your bed. Here's a helpful hint. Drink a glass of water and take a multivitamin and some aspirin before crashing. It'll help with the hangover. Try to get some sleep before the day after prom amusement park trip. And keep in mind that even though prom is over, your friends will be rehashing it for at least a week. This is the ritual. Now go to sleep. Woohoo!